Today I'm presenting some of the results from the evaluation of the Nepal Agriculture and Food Security Project. So first of all, why AFSP at all? So the project aimed to address the dual challenge of low agricultural productivity as well as poor food and nutrition indicators in the far and Midwest of the country. And Second of all, why a rigorous evaluation of AFSP? Uh, as we know, although the pathways linking agriculture and nutrition have been very well articulated and uh, spoken about, there is still quite a dearth of high quality evidence actually telling, telling us what the impact of ag interventions on nutrition outcomes are. So AFSP was a five-year project implemented from 2013 just till this past spring, 2018. Um, it, the aim was to improve livelihoods of rural farmers by improving agricultural outputs as well as enhancing nutritional practices. And it focused in 19 districts of the mid and um, far west hills and mountains. Uh, it was jointly implemented by the Ministry of Agricultural Development and the Ministry of Health with technical assistance from FAO and supervised by the World Bank. So the project had four broad components and the two highlighted here are the ones that were the focus of the evaluation. So that's technology dissemination and adaption as well as food and nutritional status enhancement. So just to give you an idea of what the project was actually doing at the community level, uh, in terms of crops, there were uh, the main implementation modality was farmer field school through which information about improved crop varieties as well as improved seed production uh, with our colleagues at NARC uh, as well as promotion of improved management technologies for crops. In terms of agriculture, the project introduced more robust breeds of goats to Nepal such as boar and sanin. Um, there was farmer field schools for goat as well as poultry, as well as promotion of uh, dairy milk production in both buffalo and cows. And again, uh, promotion of improved management practices, things such as timely vaccination, construction of improved goat sheds, and among many others. In terms of nutrition, there was a revitalization of ward level uh, health mothers groups, which in some cases had been inactive and not very dynamic. Um, there is also behavior change communication materials created by the project, including radio and TV messages, uh, flip charts, manuals for FCHVs, and um, also a development of local recipes at each district level using locally available foods. Um, there are also home nutrition gardens, which is kind of like a backyard kitchen garden, is the terminology used in other projects. Uh, village model farms, as well as small grant support. So that meant giving uh, small amounts of uh, money for community demand-driven projects, such as construction of community mills, uh, for making sarbotam pitto and other things, such as uh, creating a juice, uh, juice bottling project, for example. So this is the theory of change for the project, and the top row shows the agricultural pathway that the project was meant to work, and the bottom row shows the nutritional pathway. So overall, they come together in the rightmost column, which shows how the two components of the project were supposed to complement each other. So the idea was that improved agricultural practices and increased yields would lead to um, higher availability and diversity of foods available for children and mothers who are making nutrition decisions. So within this pathway, these are some of the questions we looked at in the evaluation process. Um, due to limited time, I'm only going to discuss a few of them here, namely um, what were the actual impacts on the incomes of the project in terms of agricultural yield, so the direct outcomes, as well as um, just to look at how the project impacted nutritional outcomes. So just a quick background on the evaluation design. There were 190 VDCs, so 10 per district in the project. And of those, the evaluation looked at 160 of them. And there was a randomized phase in of project components at the VDC level. So VDCs, eligible VDCs were clustered and then half were selected randomly to receive the project in year one and the other half um, started after year three. And in addition to those, on the right side, you can see we had 68 non-FSP or control VDCs, which never received the project, but were uh, matched and in similar districts, sorry, in the same districts. And we also collected data in those communities every time we collected data in our project communities. 
So there were three rounds of data collection collected by New Era. Uh, you can see the dates and the sample sizes here. Uh, it was a very comprehensive agricultural and nutrition survey and uh, included detailed information on cultivation and yields, agri livestock production, including um, eggs and milk produced, um, and the normal nutrition modules, including household food insecurity, dietary recall, and child anthropometry. So for the analysis, we compare our project communities with the control communities. But due to our phased in project design, we're also able to compare our early starters to our late starters, which was sort of an internal control. So we'll take a little bit of a look at that as well. And we used um, an ANCOVA specification controlling for various covariates. And um, given the complexity of teasing out the differences of uh, um, nutrition, agriculture, and livestock components in the project, we use aggregate household income here as our main outcome. So I'm gonna show a series of figures that look like this, which show the impact estimates of our regressions. So I'll just briefly explain how to interpret it. It's pretty straightforward. On the left side, in the bold, you see the uh, rounds of data collection for which the analysis is done. So for example, baseline to midline at the top, and then midline to endline, and baseline all the way to endline at the bottom. And just below the bold, you see the group for which the conclusion is being made. So in this case, it's the AFSP project communities in comparison to the control communities. On the right panel, you see the sample size for the regression. And the graph itself, the dot represents the um, point estimate for the impact uh, effect, and the horizontal bar is the 90% confidence interval. The red vertical bar is the zero axis and also the threshold for statistical significance. So in other words, if the horizontal bars cross the zero axis, then the results are statistically indistinguishable from zero. So for example, in this case, we see that from baseline to midline, our project communities saw an 11% increase in average income compared to the controls. And from midline to endline, 13%, and overall, throughout the project, an 18% increase. So, um, as I said earlier, we also took a look at the impact of exposure length of the project. So here we see uh, long exposure versus short exposure VDCs every, in each analysis. So in this case, between baseline and midline and between midline to endline, we don't see significant increases for our early starters, meaning the project uh, communities that started from year one. However, as you can see in the bottom, from over the length of the project, there were indeed, for both the long and short exposure communities, a significant increase, uh, 16 and 20% respectively, in income. Um, we also broke it down into income from crops and livestock, since those are the two main channels through which the project operated. So when looking at crop income, uh, we didn't see a statistical difference between our control communities and the AFSP communities. However, when we limit the analysis to households who reported joining a farmer's group, we do indeed see uh, significant gains in income, in crop income, in project communities. Uh, for livestock, um, over the lifetime of the project, there was an 18% increase in average income in our project communities relative to the controls. And this holds true um, when looking specifically at the farmers group once again. And actually, this result in livestock income held true over a series of regressions with different treatment specifications, including the short exposure, long exposure. So the result is quite robust for the livestock income. Um, and since I was mentioning farmers groups, um, this is just a descriptive figure to show the impact that AFSP did have just in the formation and recruitment of people into farmers groups. So the lightest blue color on the right represents households that reported never being in a farmers group uh, in the past year. And so you can see the bottom bar, which represents AFSP communities, only 14% of people reported not having participated in a farmer's group, whereas uh, in the control, which is the top bar, more than 50% of households actually said that they had never been a part of a farmer's group. So this does show that it was successful. The project, if nothing else, was successful in recruiting people into farmer's groups, let's say. 
Uh, so moving on to food security and nutrition, I just have a couple of figures here. Um, food security improved in both our project communities and our AFSP, uh, sorry, and our control communities at a kind of a similar level. We didn't see any statistical difference between them. So here you see again, the lightest blue represents households who reported no food insecurity in the past 30 days. And as you can see, there's not too much difference be between baseline and endline between the controls and the AFSP areas. For women's average dietary diversity, once again, the started off at very similar levels, the baseline, and in the end line, there was a similar increase. It wasn't statistically different, and um, there's not time to go through the other outcomes, but it was similarly, we didn't find any uh, significant uh, relationships between nutrition outcomes and our project VDCs. So in summary, our AFSB communities saw bigger increases in average household income than our project communities, 18% more. These gains were mostly driven by livestock, and they did persist for the earlier starting communities for three to five years of the project. Um, <clears throat> and so food security and nutrition indicators were not significantly better in our project areas in relation to the controls. And there's a few reasons that might be the case. One is that the BCC component of the project was quite delayed. Uh, it took time for the really the BCC things to get into the field. Um, another is the possibility of spillover uh, since there was radio messages involved and our neighboring communities would have been exposed to similar materials. Also the operation of projects like Suhara who are also operating from Suhara 2 started from 2016 district wide in some of our districts as well. Um, so these are some reasons why we might not have detected any difference. Um, and this is kind of saying the same point again, but basically what we saw is that even in non-project communities, there was some improvement in nutrition and food security indicators, even without the income gains that our project communities experienced. And this is just interesting to think about in the context of um, what we refer to as the income pathway when we're talking about agriculture and nutrition linkages, which is usually considered this, the second pathway in the, the model that's normally used. And it's just uh, an indication that we need to do more research into what exactly needs to be done to translate income gains into improved nutrition outcomes, and also in what cases can nutrition be improved without having uh, an increase necessarily in household income. Um, and finally, we're using the data from this project already to inform a project that's currently uh, in the design phase. Um, we're using the data to create a proxy means test for uh, selecting project participants. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge um, the others in the research team, um, Sahel and Michael, as well as Paul Christian, who's the lead economist on this evaluation. And a big thank you to all the survey participants who gave their time. Uh, New Era, the AFSP project team, FAO, and all the government staff at the district level who helped out during the course of the evaluation. Thank you.